As many of you may know, one of the biggest changes in my carry over the last year or so was that I started carrying fixed blades pretty regularly, and that's because of a lot of these on the table. Many of these were the cause of that massive change in my EDC, so I figured now was a great opportunity for me to tell you about 10 of my favorite fixed blades for EDC. And with that said, let's do the damn thing. All right, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. This is the second time that I'm shooting this video because Ricky flat out refused to edit the first one. He said it was really, 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 really nice. Really, 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 really like, oh, you don't like it when I suck my finger. Really, 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 really bad. Get some more sleep, kids. Don't be like me. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. That Glad was... I don't have to edit that. Uh, I'm just here to tell you what I ended up focusing on a lot in the first take of this video was something that is a make and break for a fixed blade, especially for EDC, and that is the sheath. I think it's more important than, say, a clip for a folding knife. Like, you can deal with a bad clip. A clip is almost just a clip, right? It goes in your pocket, and as long as it holds the knife there, it's not really that bad in most cases. A sheath, however, is like crucial to a good fixed blade, and a lot of knife makers overlook the sheath. It's like an afterthought. They make a great knife and an okay sheath, and that's why some of the knives that I'd love to include in this list just aren't on here. The sheaths aren't great, but the knife is amazing. So instead, what we have here are 10 great EDC fixed blades that just so happen to have an amazing sheath or an amazing aftermarket option for a sheath. So I think a great place to start is with a fixed blade that changed how I approached and viewed EDC fixed blades. And it's probably true of many of you as well. And that would be the GMF one from Giant Mouse Knives. This is a very small fixed blade. It was one of the first small fixed blades I ever had. It also changed my opinion on small knives as well. Actually, I think that probably should go to Jesper Voxnes, but the GMF one is kind of an iconic EDC fixed blade now. It's skeletonized. It has this really nice wide sheep's foot blade. It comes in two different steels, N690 and 390 uh, and two different finishes. You have a like satin finish and this uh, kind of acid stone wash finish. Now the sheath that it comes with is not amazing and that's probably one of the reasons I just kind of tossed it to the side at first. I don't really care for belt sheaths. And today I would actually maybe carry this just because it's not bad. Um, it's kind of out of the way, tucks in nicely against your sides, very slim. However, very quickly after I got this knife, I also got this in the mail, which is a Oak City Leather Goods pocket sheath for the GMF-1. I know he makes this sheath now and he makes it better. This clip is pretty terrible. It's got very light retention and it's just a very thin bent clip, but he does have better clips and, and sheaths in general now. But the thin clip aside, the sheath makes this knife much more carryable, if you want to consider that a word. Uh, and it's just a good knife in general. It's got a good utilitarian blade shape. It's small, it's a three finger grip, but if you put a lanyard on it, it feels really good in the hand, and you can also buy leather scales for this. There's some aftermarket scale options. The leather ones, also from Oak City Leather Goods, look awesome. That said, it is a small blade, and not all of you are going to like a small blade, but I couldn't make this list and not include this knife. Um, with a 5.4 inch overall length, it is on the smaller side, and it's also on the cheaper side from between 135 and 175, depending on the blade steel that you choose. But the GMF1 is the first one on this list, because... It was the first fixed blade that I really carried a lot. I didn't even write this one down uh, because it's just going to be kind of a quick alternative to the GMF one. The Bull Trout from Topps Knives. It's a little bit longer. It's beefier in the handle because it does have scales, but it's it's just similar in a lot of ways. The sheath is why it's not my favorite. I didn't like the sheath the first time I got it. I don't love the sheath now. It doesn't have like great retention or anything. It just kind of hangs out in there. Uh, but the knife itself is good. This is what I was talking about at the beginning. But Bull Trout, if you can't get your hands on a GMF-1, it's a good alternative. And I don't know about sheath options for alternatives to this, but if you can find an alternative sheath, the Bull Trout would be phenomenal. All right, let's go with the second knife. I think this is really the one that changed my mind the most about EDC fixed blades, at least early on, and that is the Bradford Guardian 3. This is a long blade with a short handle, but it has amazing ergonomics. This one, I believe, is M390. It does come with a leather sheath. It's a belt sheath. I don't really care for belt sheaths, as you guys know, but the knife itself really, really makes up for it because you have a good grip. There are multiple scales that you can choose from. You can also buy some aftermarket. You can get the, they're kind of flat scales with different textures or the contoured scales. I've always kind of erred on the side of the contoured scales. 
all sorts of materials as well. With an overall length of 6.75 inches, it's one of the bigger fixed blades that I'm gonna have on this list, but it really doesn't feel like it. You get a lot of blade for that length as well. The blade is the majority of what we're holding here. But what really changed this for me was the sheath. I have the Armatus Kydex sheath, which is fine. It's okay. But this right here is a Roke Customs leather sheath in Vachetta leather with a really stout clip. Um, it rides really low in the pocket, which is something I love in a fixed blade, something that just slides all the way down in your pocket. And I think the best thing about the Bradford Guardian 3 is it's made in the USA, but it's not expensive. They range from about $120 to $270, so you can get a very affordable Guardian 3. Um, and they do have bigger sizes if you want something a little bigger. They have a three and a half, they have a four. I feel like there's one more in there that was introduced recently, but there's a lot of options from Bradford. All of their knives are great. But this right here, if you can get your hands on a Roke custom sheath or another pocket sheath for the Guardian, this is going to be one of the best EDC fixed blades you can get your hands on, period. Now, I do have two alternatives because I know you guys at the very end of this list are going to be like, but what about White River and the M1? White River has a Model 1, which if you put beside a Guardian 3, they got a lot of similarities. Uh, they've got a lot going on between them that are very similar. This one has like a bigger choil and whatnot. Similar blade shape, similar size, similar price points. This one is $120. Uh, so the M1 is affordable and just, it's an analog, right? It's a, it's a replacement for the Guardian 3. If you don't like, say, maybe the smaller handle, you can get an M1, which has more of a handle to it than blade. That's really your biggest difference between them and the sheath options as well. So this one comes with Kydex. So if you prefer Kydex, that might be something that sways you. Uh, but there's something that, since we're on the, the topic of the M1, we've got this as well. This is called the Scout Feather from Outdoor Element. And it's a little more of a diversion from the, the Guardian 3, but it is a really good replacement for the M1. And it's only $50. It's VG10 steel, which is great steel for the money. And it has all this going for it. You have a ceramic cone in the sheath, you have a clip, and you have a ferro rod, which works really, really well. Hopefully I don't catch the carpet on fire. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. <sighs> uh, 50 bucks for this is an am amazing deal. Uh, the only thing that I don't love about it is the position of this clip. Because of where it is, it's not really set up for right-hand carry, and it sticks way out of the pocket. So this is more of a strap clip than a pocket clip, and that's why it's not on the list, because this would easily be on the list as a great EDC fixed blade if it had a better sheath option for pocket carry. And since it doesn't have giant eyelets like a typical Kydex sheath, there's not really much you can do for different ways. You could put a lanyard here and carry as a neck knife, but for pocket carry, not many great options for this one. But the Scout Feather, these are actually on Kickstarter right now. I believe that campaign's still going. They're not out just yet, but yeah. Just an alternative if you want something a little more budget friendly that's very similar to the M1, but kind of similar to the Guardian. Next up we have what is, I guess, a classic again at this point. This is the Boker AK-1 that is a collaboration with Daily Customs. And this one in particular was a gift to me at Blade Show 2022 from Yannick of Daily Customs. Um, it's a regrind from Alex Kremer, who is the designer AK. He's AK in AK-1. And this is their first knife design, I guess, that they did production. Uh, there's now an AK-2, which is basically the same thing, just skeletonized. And they are almost infinitely customizable. So these scales come off. You can change just the inlay. You can change these titanium scales to micarta or wood or a million different options that they have available. So they do range from about $130 for just a basic AK-1 all the way up to 600 and beyond for extra custom versions, Damascus steels, and all the bells and whistles. One of the coolest things is that it has uh, the option to put a lanyard loop on it. If you don't like a lanyard loop, you can make it flush like this, but if you take these scales off, there's a, a little piece in there. You can take out, flip it around, and put the scales back on, and you have a lanyard loop. And then we have the sheath. There are multiple sheath options on Daily Customs website, but this is the one from DP Steel and Leather. Uh, I don't know exactly what kind of leather this is. I don't remember, but this is a really nice pocket sheath. Everything you want in a pocket sheath, nothing more. It's slim, tucks away nicely in your pocket. The retention's good and it holds the knife very, very well. This is a really good package and you can get it for as little as 130 for the knife, 
These sheaths are 90 euros. I don't know what the conversion is on that, but it is hard to come up with a better combination than this. Well, at least I thought that until this knife uh, landed on my doorstep with this sheath. This is the Griffin Co. Scout 2.5. It has an overall length of 6.5 inches, so it's a little bit smaller than the other, but it carries way smaller, and it does have a smaller blade, larger, longer handle, and this is one of the first knives that kind of pushed me in that direction, wanting smaller knife, bigger handle, especially in these small pocket fixed blades. I feel like you get a better grip on it and more control over the blade. S35VN blade steel, you've got some grooves here cut out, just a little stylistic, and then you have, I have brass scales on here, but you have options for your scales. I also have a set of micarta, but as you can tell from all the patina, I much prefer the brass scales. It does add some heft to it, but it makes it look sweet, it makes it feel good, and it just kind of, you know, builds a story as you use and carry it more. But one of the things that just totally makes this knife if you can manage to get your hands on it, is this sheath from Paradrop Leather. This angled clip is one of the key elements of this sheath, as well as the way that the knife sits in here. Once you have this down in your pocket, you can see that the knife is only gonna stick out about three quarters of an inch, and it carries so well and thin in the pocket, it's like it's not even there. This is one of my favorite fixed blades to carry period. I love this thing. And if you have one, you probably would too. It's really good. The only problem with this knife is that I don't know when to tell you when to buy one or how to tell you when to buy one. I know that currently right now, Keith from Griffin Co is prepping some of these. Uh, he has some on his way. I don't know when they'll be available, but there is another batch of these coming right now. So if you like this, be on the lookout. The other thing is this sheath is not easy to get your hands on either, and I don't know what it costs. The knife runs between 185 and 220, depending on your scale options, micarta being the cheapest, brass, titanium, and carbon fiber being the most expensive. But I love this freaking knife. It fits in the hand well. It's just almost perfection. Now this goes against what I just said about liking longer handles, smaller blades. This is the polar opposite of that in the Vero Axon fixed blade. This is a very big blade at 8.1 inches overall. It's actually the biggest knife on this list by a fair margin, I think almost an inch, maybe. It's a big knife, especially for fixed blade carry or EDC pocket carry. But the way it rides in the sheath makes it totally fine, honestly. This clip is a big part of that. This is sold separately, so you don't get this with the knife. Um, just keep that in mind if you're looking at the Vero Axon fixed blade. Uh, also, just a note, there's another knife coming out from Vero Engineering, which is much closer, I'd say, in style to that Griffin coat, just in that it's a drop point. Uh, looks sweet, can't wait to get my hands on one, but for now, the Axon fixed blade is sweet. It's great utility blade. Uh, just a big worn cliff blade, just a hunk of steel. You do get the same options and handles or scale options. You have brass, micarta, I don't know if there were titanium, but there were definitely carbon fiber. I have both marble carbon fiber and OD micarta here on the table. Again, obviously I tend to go for the brass. It does add the additional heft, but I like the way it looks and feels. This is actually a prototype clip. The, the official clip is actually a good bit smaller. You can see there, it's a little shorter. It has stronger retention than this longer one. Um, I just like this longer one on this knife because it lets it ride a little lower in the pocket without having to have this up here and it doesn't block your fingers. Either way, point is this knife right here is awesome. M390 steel, amazing utility blade there, easy to sharpen because it's just a flat edge. I like it a lot and uh, I've not really heard anybody who doesn't like the Axon fixed blade. It's sweet, it's big for EDC, but it works. All right, what can I say about the Wicket that I haven't already? You guys know I love this knife. It's one of my favorite knives of all time and I have it in almost every configuration it's available in, except for a wooden handled one and now the big boy. There's a bigger version of the Wicket that has come out in the last month. The very first Wicket I got was this one in G10. I believe it also had a Nitro V blade steel. Maybe it was Magnica, I don't remember, it doesn't matter. Um, and I was like, there's no way this knife is actually super functional, it's too small. And it's changed my mind again on really small blades. Like, really, really small fixed blades. Let me get the GMF-1. It makes the GMF-1 look a little more big, like which is an accomplishment, that's a lot. But the truth is, this knife is extremely functional. Like, very, very good. I like this knife a lot. It's just, 
good for everyday tasks. This, you don't need any more than this for most everyday tasks. Now, if you're doing some hard work on a farm or something, yeah, go for an XL, but for just day-to-day -day stuff that most of us are gonna be doing with a knife, this is totally fine. This is his like primary model, the Wicket. And then we have the Primitive Wicket, which is a Scandi grind and 1095 steel with a jute wrapped handle that is now then like resin filled after the jute wrap. Then you have a Wicket XL Primitive or Primitive Wicket XL in 80 CRV2. This also has a jute wrapped handle and both of these are Scandi. And then you have a Wicket XL, which is just the larger version of the original which has a full flat grind in Nitro V, which is far more common than say Magna Cut. And then we have this like little weird uh, Franken knife, which is a Scandi grind with a flat scale and 80 CRV2. So it's like a primitive, but with micarta handles. So that shows you kind of like the spread of what he does regularly, but what Tom does is just mix all this stuff up all the time. There's always something new on his website. Obviously now the big boy is another one. He has a chickpea as well, but he's just mixing combinations of flared tubes or different hardware and making all sorts of different wickets. Um, the price on them ranges from 145, the primitive being the cheapest, and then all the way up to uh, Wicked XLs that go into like the $350 range. And that's coming, I think, typically with a Kydex sheath like this one, the offensive sheath. This right here, especially this one, is one of my favorite knives of all time. I love the Wicked XL. This is probably at the moment my most carried fixed blade, except for the one I have in my pocket just because it's newer and I'm carrying it a lot. This one has seen, I would say, the most pocket time of any of these two really the uh wicket and wicket wicket xl and then going back to these sheaths this is an offensive industry sheath it is an ambi sheath so this knife can go in there either direction and it just doesn't matter how much you use this sheath in either direction it's not going to affect it you can still carry it either way he's now offering leather sheaths as well these are made from badger claw and if you're more of a belt sheath kind of person now there is an option for that but originally, like with your primitives, this is what you're gonna get with it. Just a little Kydex sheath, and I've turned it into a neck knife with a Wazoo Viking Spark. Uh, so it's now got a sharpener, a ferro rod, and then a striker on the back of that. But that is the Wicket and the Wicket XL. Please go check it out. They're awesome. Now I just want a wooden handled one. Always need another Wicket. Never too many new Wickets. That's what Tom tells me, never too many Wickets. Of course he does. All right, let's talk about the TKL Piranha. Uh, I get a lot of questions about this one anytime I show it because it's it's kind of interesting. It's like a smaller steak knife, I guess. It's really thin. It's the opposite of the Wicket, really. It's long and narrow, and I, it's, I like it a lot. I don't know what else to say about it. It's now in Nitro V, which I like. I actually like Nitro V steel a whole lot. Um, and then I like what they've done with these little pass-through tubes, the barrel tubes for the Chicago screws that hold the scales on. I think it looks great. It's really neat. And uh, the knife just feels really good in the hand and it carries well. It does stick out of the pocket a good bit when it's in here with a sheath, but this is actually how I learned about discrete carry clips. It was TKL and I love these clips so much now. I put them on any knife I can because they're cheap clips and they work exceptionally. They work so much better than your uh, like your Ulti clips because they don't shred your pockets. Ulti clips can and they're not quite as easy or fast to use. Ulti clips still have a place, but for pocket carry, I prefer the discrete carry clips. Uh, yeah, it's a great little fixed blade. They have other handle options or scale options that you can add. So I have a couple of sets here, um, green G10, OD Micarta, black G10 or Micarta, I think that's G10. And then they also have this one right here if you want a loop on yours. And it really helps with being able to hold onto the knife, but it does make it stick out of the pocket even more. So just keep that in mind. But if that's something you're into, they do offer that as well as a handle option for the Piranha. I know that a lot of people really like that. It's not really my speed, but it does you know, add some functionality to such a small knife. So that is the Piranha. And I want to mention really quickly, a little alternative to that is the Sparrow Hawk from Topps Knives. It also has a sheath that does not come with this clip, the discrete carry uh, clip, but it is a very similar knife. Um, you do need paracord for this one because it is a three finger knife, but in terms of functionality, usability and everything, I'd say it's right there with the Piranha and it's available in most places that you can find knives. Blade HQ, it's available from Topps. They're available all over and that is the Sparrow Hawk, and they're about 80 bucks. So if you're looking for something like the Piranha, can't get your hands on one, I highly recommend 
the Sparrowhawk. All right, I also talked about this knife quite a bit. I got one of the first production runs at Blade Show West in October, and then they dropped these. This is also one of the American-made versions of the Lookout from Big Idea Design. Overall length on this knife is six inches, and they range uh, from 200 to 300. So this one, the USA-made version that's made in their shop in Chattanooga, is $300. These are all sold out. So if you missed the first 50, which were kind of like a mid-tech production run in their shop in Chattanooga, which you can tell the difference because it has the American flag on the back, um, these were OD Micarta and Magna Cut, and the first 10 were black G10 with blue hardware and Magna Cut. There's going to be a production run, which is M390 and titanium scales, and they'll have a Kydex sheath instead of this leather one. It has a milled titanium clip. I believe those are going to be closer to the ballpark of 200, and these were 300, so they'll be a little bit more affordable, and there's going to be a, they're going to be available in much larger numbers, but it's the exact same knife. Right, it's the same exact design, same dimensions and everything. You're just swapping out my Carter for titanium, so it'll be a little bit heavier, but it'll have that same six inch overall length. And I just love the feel of this knife. It, it works so good as an EDC fixed blade. It feels kind of like a paring knife out of your kitchen with just a little bit more heft. And it's that same thing that I talked about that I liked so much earlier, short blade, longer handle, and it just works so, so well. You have so much control. I freaking love this knife. I've carried the absolute crap out of this one and the other one. I love the lookout from Big Eye. Uh, one of my favorite things they've come out with to date, which is really saying something because you guys know I freaking love the TPT slide and some of their pins. I love the lookout. This was knocked out. This is a home run. Love this knife. Next up, we have this from TJ Schwartz. Schwartz Knives. This is the Overland Sport and I loved the Overland. It's a really good knife. And TJ, I, I saw TJ pull one out of his pocket at Blade Show 2022, I believe it was. And I thought it was a Chris Reeve fixed blade. In fact, when he first pulled it out of his pocket, I thought it was a backpacker from Chris Reeve. And it wasn't until I saw the blade shape that I realized that's not a backpacker. What is that? I thought it was like some unreleased backpacker with an Encingo blade. I knew TJ was a f was really good friends with Tim Reeve, but maybe he got like a special knife. But that wasn't the case. It was actually TJ's design, and it's become one of my favorite fixed blade designs ever. It's so good, especially for like camp cooking and stuff, and that's what it's meant for. Overland. It's the Overland. It's an Overland knife, and a lot of what you're going to be doing with a knife when you're overlanding is cooking. So it is a really good chef knife, right? You can get some good flush cuts with it. The blade shape is phenomenal. It's very utilitarian, and TJ sent it to me. He said, I want, to, I want your feedback. Tell me what you think about it, and I carried it a little bit, but I told him Pretty quickly after, I'm like, it's just too big. I'm not gonna carry this knife as an EDC knife because it was about this size. Maybe a little bit smaller, but it was still a big knife for EDC and that wider blade. For a long time, I used it every single day in my kitchen and I've used it a lot going camping, but for EDC, it just wasn't it. And then I talked to TJ just before Blade Show 2023 and he showed me a prototype of the Overland Sport, which is the exact same knife, just scaled down a little bit. Love it, it's perfect. It is the exact same thing, just made for EDC. It's a really good EDC fixed blade, especially if you like to do food prep or just any kind of work. It's a good utilitarian sheep's foot blade. It's great, and I love the position of the blade with the handle, that drop to it just makes it so much better. It's something that you see it and you're like, okay, yeah, sure, fine, but you don't realize how good that little bit of a drop to the blade is until you start using it. If you start, you know, cutting like this, if you're doing any kind of food prep, this drop to your blade is awesome. That's why shift knives have it, right? They're all dropped from the handle. Um, and this knife is just phenomenal. So your overall length on this is 6.6 .6 inches and your price on these is 265. Now what you do get with that is a Magna Cut blade, but you also have the option to completely customize this knife and get it how you want it. You can customize all the hardware on the sheath as well. You can choose the sheath color, your uh, eyelet color on your sheath. You can also choose your, like, they're not pivot collars, but you can choose your collar cover, color, your hardware color, your scale color, your blade finish. You could choose every aspect of this knife straight from TJ. It doesn't cost you anything extra, and I think that is awesome. Um, in fact, at Blade Show, he was doing that on the fly. At Blade Show West, he was doing build sheets for these knives on the fly. I built this 
at his table, which was awesome. Being able to see the process and have people order custom knives that are totally customized to what they want right there on the spot is really cool. Um, great knife, great dude, really, really awesome. I also have a coupon code for these and that is best damn if you want 10% off that. So that's 26 bucks off your order of an Overland Sport, best damn. And finally, the very last knife I wanna talk about in the list is this one right here, and it's what I've been carrying for the last two to three weeks. This is the Bilgewater Blades Jackrabbit, and I liken this to like a, I don't know, a fixed blade version of the PM Mac 2 from McNeese Knives. It's got that wide blade, drop point, good handle. It's just a good work knife. So if you look at the Jackrabbit next to the Guardian 3, you can see that the, the Jackrabbit is a little bit of a wider blade than the Guardian 3, but not that much. I mean, we're talking like eighth of an inch, maybe, probably not even that much. But if you look at this Roke sheath versus the uh, Jackrabbit sheath from Bilgewater, this sheath is considerably narrower, like a half inch, three quarter inch, I don't know. It's, it's enough to where that this makes a big presence in the pocket and this one doesn't and it's just this width to the sheath that's just making room for the clip instead of just kind of bundling it together a little bit better i guess um still i love the knife so much that i can kind of overlook that because the knife itself is super comfy i like the shape of the blade it carries well it is just a full-on knife and this one is seven inches for an overall length so it's a a lot of knife and it does carry well but I end up having to carry this one in my back pocket instead of my front pocket where I normally carry fixed blades just because of the width of the sheath. Also, these are coming in at one of the more expensive fixed blades on the list at $340. There are different configurations. They did, he did a run with Altum. There are just um, chamfered scales that are flat also that if you don't like the texturing, I really like the texturing. Wish I had it in like OD green or something. We will be doing a custom run of these, I think, as well with Carry Commission. Uh, so if you want to see all the cool stuff we come up with for the Jackrabbit, go follow Carry Commission. But I love the knife. I think it is a really good blade. The sheath is like a 5 out of 10, but the knife is like a 9 out of 10. So, And it is Magna Cut Steel, if that's something that, that matters to you. Still, just a really good fixed blade that I like to carry. And it's been in my pocket basically every day since I got it in the mail. So that's the Jackrabbit from Bilgewater Blades. So that is the list of my 10 favorite EDC fixed blades. And that's according to me, these are mine that I have personal experience with. And it was actually hard to pare this down to 10 because fixed blades is a whole new realm of this, this industry that I like, it's an entire vertical that I barely paid attention to. And there are so many fixed blade companies. I mean, so many, and it is really hard to, to find them all and, and to use them all. And like, it's just a totally different thing that I've just started into. And I have found some that I really like a lot and I think they are great. But uh, if you have some suggestions for, for fixed blades that I should check out, I know that I got my eyes on some, like that new Vero one. There's a Boker um, Barlow fixed blade designed by Lucas Burnley that looks awesome. Haven't had a chance to get my hands on that. The Ferrum Forge Lackey is like the stinger, but in fixed blade form, that's great. And it's like 60 bucks. So this is not the definitive list of best EDC fixed blades ever. These are just my favorites that I've picked up and used and beat on and, and just love. I do have a couple of honorable mentions here. Um, we'll start with this one because for so long, I wanted a Winkler knife. I went to Mass General Store in Asheville over and over and looked at them and I never pulled the trigger on one. I looked at them at Blade Show and I just never, was, the timing was never right. And then at Georgia Bushcraft Fall Gathering this year, Taylor from Ridge Runner Blades uh, handed me this and he was like, here, I want you to have this. I know you want a Winkler and uh, man, that was awesome. Thank you, Taylor. And the reason this just doesn't fit on the list, it basically comes down to how this rides in the pocket. It sticks out along long ways um and that's not to say that some of these others don't as well right but it just comes down to you know i have to make a list and i have to something has to be cut one thing that winkler does that is so nice is they put leather on the inside of the kydex though listen to this you don't you don't hear anything it just kind of snaps into place it's so nice once you feel it i mean it also does come with a discrete carry clip the other reason I didn't want to put it on the list is that a lot of what you guys want 
in an EDC fixed blade is something that's slicey and thin and just gets the job done really well. This is a beefy blade with not a lot of taper. It is thick behind the edge. This is a workhorse of a knife. This is something you can beat on and not worry about. And for EDC, I don't know if that's exactly what you guys are looking for. Some of you probably, very likely, but I think the majority of you guys would prefer something that is more EDC oriented and hollow grinds and thin knives that are slicey. So this is not that. This thing is a tank. It's got a thicker stock than all of these and it doesn't taper that much. It is pretty thick behind the edge. So I, I see this as more of like a work knife that uh, not all of you will be looking for. So if that's what you're after, I highly recommend the SD1 from Winkler. And then this one, uh, I actually really like this knife a whole lot. This is the Bornus from Wesson. And I've shown it a few times on the channel. I got some questions about it because it is a good looking knife. It's a great looking knife. Has S35 VN blade steel. The price is pretty good at $180. It's made in Sweden. And I, I think it's a great EDC fixed blade. The problem comes down to the sheath isn't the best. It's not terrible. It's fine. And it would, that's really not what keeps it off the list. What keeps the Bornis off the list is the availability. I just have no idea when they're going to be available. In fact, on my, the last time I talked about this, I believe it was the best knives of 2023. Someone in the comments said, is this a scam? Because the last time you talked about it, you said that they were going to be up for pre-order in like October and that never happened. And then now they're still available for pre-order. To my knowledge, there has been two drops of the Bornis. I think just based on like the timing of when the reviews have happened on their website. And I think they're doing another run now, but I will say, I don't think they've done a particularly fantastic job about communicating when these will be available. And that might be by design. They may not know either. They may not have an idea of when these are going to be available and then just drop them. So if you're interested in the Bornus, I would say go there and sign up for notifications. Um, but other than that, I do think it's a great knife. I've carried it a good bit. I haven't carried these two because I got these in a little care package at the start of the year. And not long after that, I got the Jackrabbit, but I have carried this G10 Bornus a good bit and I like it. I like the knife a lot. It's smaller. It's not going to be for everybody, but I think it's a good knife and a good price made in Sweden. It looks sweet, but I just can't tell you when they're going to be available. And I don't know. I just felt like that made it an honorable mention alongside the, uh, the Winkler SD one. So that's it. Uh, that's my 10 favorite EDC fixed blades with a couple of honorable mentions. Let me know what your favorite fixed blade is in the comments down below. And until next time, carry on.